So our first presenter today, I want to introduce Jim Tingler with iTech. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So my name is Jim. I, I work at uh, iTech. And uh, believe it or not, we're out at the Marion County Airport. That's not the Ocala Airport. There is another airport. Um, it's out near Denellen. And so I say believe it or not because there's not a lot out there. But it's exciting what we're doing. And so I hope to tell you a little bit about that today. And so iTech stands for the Indigenous Peoples Technology and Education Center. Whew, it's easier to say iTech, right? So indigenous, that refers to First Nation people or people that are, are from that country. And so we actually work around the world uh, taking creative approaches to develop tools and training to help people in that area. So what in the world does that mean? Well, we live in an area that, that would be considered a developed world. And so, so does about 15% of the population globally. But about 85% of the world lives in places that would be developing or underdeveloped. And so when we think of things like, man, I've got this toothache, I really need to go see the dentist. We, um, we've got several options. You probably drove past several options on the way here this morning. So most developed areas have about one dentist per 5,000 people. But in undeveloped areas, your ratio looks more like one per one million. So you can start to see that it gets a little bit more complicated to be able to go to the dentist when you have that abscess tooth that is keeping you up at night and it is the only thing that you can focus on. Our team actually works to train people who have no dental background to be able to do dentistry. So places where there are no dentists, we'll go in on a short-term trip and we'll train people how to do basic extractions in dentistry. So you can see how this is a, a huge opportunity to be able to provide a service in an area where you know, somebody wouldn't have access to basic dentistry, maybe healthcare, and so this is the creativity that our team is working on. So our team actually works in a lot of different areas. And it's part of what makes us unique, kind of like this room. We've got a lot of backgrounds, a lot of professionals, a lot of passions. And when we can come together, we can see problems or challenges from a lot of different angles. And so on our team, we have dentists, we have doctors, we have mechanical engineers, we have aerospace engineers, we have movie producers. We have a wide variety of, of passionate professional people that are all trying to look at the challenges that our world has. And so the challenge that we face is that there's a lot of hurting people globally. There's a lot of hurting people in our community, right? But what is the appropriate response? Recently, uh, we had a um, pretty big storm roll through. Panama City, they're, they're, they're in need of some help. And so our community, our state, we're responding appropriately. We're sending relief. We're, we're trying to help those people that just went through a disaster. But five years from now, if we're continuing to send, you know, bottles of water and food into this area, there's probably a problem with that, right? And so... When disaster happens, there's a need for relief. But if we're not working towards rehabilitation and development, then we're gonna create dependency. And so the appropriate response for that type situation seems pretty cut and dry, but it can get more complicated as we look at maybe that person that walks up to you that's, that's distressed in the parking lot. You walk out of the grocery store, you've got a bag full of groceries, and somebody comes up and says that they're hungry and they need $5 to be able to go get a meal. What's the appropriate response? We've all been there. We've all been in those, those challenging situations to know what the response is. And so sometimes it's more complicated. It's not simply giving that person the money. Globally, 
I, th I think one of the things that the United States brings is, is we like to fix problems. We see a problem, we want to bring a solution. So when somebody, they don't have any food, well, let's get them food. If they don't have health care, let's get them health care. They don't have shoes, well, let's, let's start a program. We want to get behind programs like a Tom Shoe Company where we can buy one that's going to give one. The challenge that we have is, what happens to the guy that was trying to sell shoes in that community where we just poured a bunch of shoes? You see, so there's, there's complications in our effort to try and help hurting people. Sometimes we actually can hurt them. And so I'm sure many people are familiar with the Hippocratic Oath. The, the first rule of medicine is to do no harm. And so when we try to look through the lens of helping people around the world, in, in different areas, starting, I just mentioned dentistry. Um, the first goal is to do no harm. And so what we believe is an appropriate response is to train the local people to do the work. So when, when there's an area where there are no dentists, a lot of people would send a team of dentists to be able to go and, and see as many people as possible. Where there is no health care, they want to send doctors in and, and set up tents and see as many people maybe in a week. But the problem is we have a bigger need that if every healthcare professional were to leave the United States and go out you know, into these underdeveloped worlds, there's a greater need. And so our challenge, the, the, the reason why iTech exists is we're trying to develop tools and training to be able to equip the people in those areas to be able to meet those needs. And so we are a Christian organization, so we do look at things through the lens of that. And so we believe that local churches around the world are the, the avenue that this, this is the way we want to work. So we believe that a local church is a way that can provide, you know, help and care into a community. And so we're working in healthcare. We actually do um, all kind of different trainings, which I handed out some brochures, um, but I tell you what, six minutes goes a lot faster than you think it would, and so I've already had the thumbs up. So we've got a few minutes, though, for questions. So, um, guys, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, to answer some of those if you have any. Sure, thanks. Real, real fast about the flying cars. Oh, boy. So, so one of the challenges is transportation in remote locations, right? So how can you get from point A to point B? There's not always the bus or the Uber to, to, to jump on. And even in places where... Aviation exists, these small, small airstrips. Um, our team, uh, we're working to develop solutions for transportation. And so one of those solutions that we worked on was a flying car. And yes, it really flies. Um, it's basically a blend between a dune buggy and a power parachute, if you, if you guys are familiar with what those are. So the principles of flight are similar to what you'd see in a powered parachute. Uh, but it also has the driving capability. So it's fully road legal, it's FAA certified. We could drive down the road, pull over, set up the mast and wing, and be able to take off in the air. So we've got videos of that on our website, and uh, I'd love to talk more about that. Adam, Jim, can you tell us how I think that started? Well, so these are those questions they asked. What are the complicated questions that you're gonna answer? So. There's a lot of levels to this, but in short, there was a tribe that was in the middle of Ecuador that anthropologists have since called this the most, most violent tribe to have ever lived. And missionaries went in to try and reach these people, and they were actually the first people to ever make peaceful contact. They had um, five missionaries that were killed after the peaceful contact, but the story didn't end there. Families of the missionaries actually moved in with the tribe and taught this tribe that there's a different way to live. They taught forgiveness. And they taught them that killing wasn't always the answer. And so fast forward through the years, this tribe that had no exposure to outsiders, you could imagine, we could say they were underdeveloped in, as far as health care and, and things that we might see around us all the time. People were coming in and doing for these people that things that they were needing. They were, they were providing things like dentistry, health care, transportation. Our founder, Steve Saint, 
was approached by this tribe. They approached Steve and asked him if he could teach them how to do the things that people were coming in and doing for them. And so you can imagine this was a, a pretty crazy idea. How, how am I going to train you how to do dentistry, how to, how to do basic medical care, or even how to fly airplanes? And so from this crazy idea started iTech. And so here we are. And so it's a, it's a different approach. It's a creative approach. We're still learning. We're still growing. But we're finding that that need, that desire in Ecuador is a need globally. And so last year, our team was training in 22 different countries around the world. And we continue to grow in that area. So. And, and real quick, you have both a for-profit and a non-profit. And also, there's a movie based on everything you just said. There is. Right. So the, our, our organization is a, is a non-profit organization. And so um, iTech um, operates based on people believing in what we're doing. And, and so we're funded by uh, people supporting us in that. We're, we're very thankful for that, and we're very blessed to have that. Um, there actually is a for-profit business that was started um, to work doing business as mission strategies. So we actually have a facility down in Ecuador. They're manufacturing aircraft, and they actually manufacture the aircraft, ship them up to the U.S., and sell them stateside. And so that for-profit business is the avenue in which the aircraft could be sold. Uh, but. 95% of the work that we're doing, we're a non nonprofit organization. And so the movie, that was, you asked like three questions, is that allowed? <laughs> <laughs> the rules here. Okay, so there was a movie of that story that I just mentioned, it's called End of the Spear. I think Ryan mentioned that it's on Amazon Prime streaming for like 99 cents right now. But we also have a bunch of books in the front, so feel free to grab a book until they're out. And um, yeah, look, look into that story because and in all reality, it's a story that only God can write. So it's an amazing story of forgiveness. So. Okay. Everybody's going to have a lot of questions, so I'm just going to wait and listen to them. But what I want to tell you that I'm just in awe and admiration, especially in a society that we have today with so much division, politically and religion, my hats are off to you a thousand percent because you're solving a problem that's based in love. And whether it doesn't matter what your religion is, whether it's right. Christian, Muslim, whatever. That is so needed. Thank you. Well, thank you for saying that. It, it's not our idea. It, it was written in a book that was, you know, the, the world's number one selling book, and that's the Bible. The, the heart goes back to love. We're, we're called to, to love our neighbors. And if somebody has an abscessed tooth, how can you really show love to them without addressing that need? And so the needs globally that we have, how do we ignore them? What's the appropriate response? And so... That's what our team is trying to work to develop and do. Yes, sir. So what brought you to Ocala? Actually, I was uh, born in Florida, but raised in, o in Ocala. So I've lived here since I was four years old. So that's not the same for the rest of our team. Uh, I am the exception to the rule. The majority of our team um, is from all over the U.S. And so each story is a little bit unique as to how they got there. But, uh, yeah, I I've been in Ocala for a long time. Our organization started in around 96. Um, the idea was something that, that Steve Saint, our founder, um, had after living with a tribe in Ecuador, and they approached him to develop you know, tools of training and solution. And uh, he thought it was just a crazy idea. He thought, no way. I mean, how can we actually do this? Um, so it was one of those projects that wasn't like a, um, a huge ramp up organization. It was something that was kind of a side idea or a side project. But we had several guys that really took ownership of the idea and moved that along. And uh, really in 99, just, just really ramped up and uh, has continued to, to grow. And um, we've seen the fruit of, of training in different parts of the world um, and, and continue to see many opportunities. What is the biggest need that you have? As far as like helping like these these countries, what what do you find com the common need is? Well, I think the the common need is that each place is unique, and that we have 
there's not a black and white solution to each place, even when we have a training that works really well. And so the majority of our trainings, we, we try to fit into a one week trip. Our goal is to take professionals from different areas. And uh, what, what kind of time do I have? Oh, good, okay. We, we take professionals from different areas and, and we actually train people on that short term trip. This is an example of our dentistry. Uh, so we'll take dentists, um, videographers. So we train people how to create short films, um, mechanics. We teach people how to do uh, basic mechanic work where small engines, uh, chainsaws, generators, little scooters, they're going to make a lot of the underdeveloped countries go round. And the problem is people might invest their life savings into getting some of these, but they're not taught how to maintain or repair, troubleshoot. And so in a week's time, we're teaching them how to do basic mechanics work. Um, optometry, teaching people how to do eye exams and provide um, basic eye care needs. Uh, medical care, health care, teaching people how the body operates, functions, organs, um, basic uh, sanitation. Um, some issues that they might run into with um, even childbirth at home and some of the things that um, we can take for granted um, giving them the opportunity again to provide this service through a local church so we're we're trying to find professionals that go on this short-term trip so one of our complexities is finding those professionals um, it's already a crazy enough idea to go and leave your dental practice to go and train or to provide a, a maybe in a clinic for a week's time, but to train somebody who has no dentistry background, that's a pretty big challenge for people to wrap their heads around. So finding those professionals that are willing to train, but then again, each country is unique. So the complexity, the complexity that comes in, one of the biggest challenges is that it's not a black and white approach. Um, I don't know if that specifically answers your, your question. Right, so besides the flying car, you've also patented a dental chair that weighs like 25 pounds. Right. And you also have a drone that will deliver vaccines, other small payloads, right? Right, right. And so I go forward, uh, let's see here. Okay, so this is our UAV program. So we do have the flying car, it's called the Maverick. And, and believe it or not, it was covered on CNN, uh, Fox News, Travel Channel, Smithsonian Channel, Discovery Channel. And so there's been a lot of media coverage of it, of it. But our goal was to provide a solution for people in places where they wouldn't necessarily have a lot of financial resources. So the cost of that vehicle is $100,000. And so when you're looking at price tags like that, you're gonna really limit the people who could be able to use that realistically. And so, the goal was to get things into remote places. And so we've started using, looking at using UAV technology. So UAV is unmanned aerial vehicles. A lot of people have seen the little quadcopters flying around. Um, this is a fixed wing. Um, it can deliver a one pound payload 60 miles away. And so this actually travels at 60 miles an hour. It has an autopilot, uses GPS. And so this is developed as a solution to be able to maybe get medical supplies, maybe small engine parts into those places that would really be very difficult to get to, could even take weeks to be able to get to. So this is, uh, actually this is a little example of a, a payload that once it gets over the location that's, that's determined, it would, it would drop the package, so. Uh, yes, I, I lived in Ocala for a majority of my life and I understand when there's a need to help people and I right. really appreciate the idea of empowering and, and educating uh, other people on uh, things that uh, are needed in their own community which I, I strongly support. I'm actually part of the Royal Ranger program awesome. in a uh, local church here uh, that we have on Wednesdays. Uh, but also I have a, a strong connection with my family and my lineage to the island of Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. uh, there's a lot of need there. Right. Uh, a lot of need, not just um, educational, but there's a lot of violence and uh, need for, for <coughs> bringing in uh, community within within uh, the island itself. Of people. Right. So, um, if there's just something that maybe you can consider 
as I was asking that, if maybe you could look into finding a way to help have your program find a need in the island, such as agriculture, that uh, is very tough right now for, for a lot of people. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, you, you guys, I'm sure, all have businesses, and um, at the end of the day, you guys probably have a product that you could produce that if you sold X amount of product, that would equal success, right? Um, for iTech, it's a little more complicated because it's not necessarily the product that we produce, it's the challenge that we present. So we're not so much in the manufacturing, but the movement. So we want to help people see that there is a need, that there is a need to rather than think about just, hey, let's bring this solution for them, how can we empower the local people? What can we do to train them? And so for iTech to develop that, that might be you know, the, the right solution. But our belief is that we could inspire you to be a part of that solution, that you have connections that we don't have, that you know needs that we don't know about, and maybe you could pull the right people to try and find that solution. I'm using you as an example. But we, we all have you know, connections to people that we know are hurting. And so how can we find ways to help those people that isn't the quick fix? Because that's what we all really want, right? We want, okay, here's your problem, here's your solution. But in reality, the solutions are a long journey um, that oftentimes we don't have time for. So. so we have time for one last question. I think okay. we might have just touched on it. Okay. But how can we as a community help you with this? Right. And so that, that is it. You know, we are... This is our, our burden, this is our purpose, this is why we exist, is, is we're trying to challenge people to think about training and equipping. And so we're really trying to put this concept you know, into practice. We're trying to, to put this crazy idea into a reality. When somebody says, you can't train somebody how to be a dentist on a short-term trip. Well, actually, in West Africa, a place where there was five million people and one government dentist, we trained a group of pastors who have since seen over the past 10 years over 43,000 patients. And so when we have an example of a story like that, people say, wow, maybe it can be done. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to produce um, the idea we, we want to challenge you to think about how can we empower those people rather than just giving that quick fix. Thank you.